Fan action, how do he do? Hey, I am still here. I have, I'm still working on this. Oh, beautiful. Um, this double engine IPA has no head on it because, well, I actually poured it a while back. I poured it about 30 minutes ago because I did another video with, with, with another glass. And... Um, because I wanted it to sit and warm up. I did one with a slightly chilled. Um, I started probably at about 40 degrees and let it warm up a little bit from there. This one's been sitting about 30 minutes. It's probably at about 50 at the moment. So it's, and, and, and I'm definitely seeing some things change at this moment. Uh, one thing I've noticed about a lot of the uh, beers of this style specifically, or, or, you know, almost anything, but, but specifically the, the double or imperial IPA, um, you do, you are going to get bigger notes. You, you are going to get bigger aromas as it warms up. I'm not going to dispute that at all, but I've also noticed too, there are some flavors you're going to get when you chill it a little bit more than the manufacturer suggests. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> It, 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 I noticed the body also becomes more viscous as it warms, so it is going to appear to be lighter and more refreshing. That's why I typically, even though a beer says to drink at about 50, 55, I still like to start it at between 40 and 45, and that gives me some room to start with. You know, I get a baseline, as it were, and then I, you know, I can kind of let it warm. You know, I, you can't pour it and let it cool, but you can pour it and let it warm. That's why I typically let it start a little bit warmer than most beer geeks do. Most beer geeks will say pretentious shit like, oh, I'm pouring it sit like I just did. But I did one a little colder. That's why I was able to do that and not sound like a pretentious ass. Excuse me, I got a burp. There we go. Excuse me. I don't deny that beer. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Beers like this, you do get more flavor. Stouts also, uh, uh, as it warms up. But... I, I think there are flavors that you also get when it's colder that you don't get as it warms. So that's why I will pour it colder. I'll take a few drinks, let it continue to warm to get to those other flavors. Because I, I think, yeah, if, if you drink it too cold, you are going to miss those flavors. But if you drink it too warm, you're also going to miss some too. I've said that before. Ugh. Uh, wow, you know, every once in a while you'll drink a beer, and it seems really great at first, and then it kind of gets cloying on you. And then every once in a while you'll get a beer like this that that's, that uh, seems to fit the style perfectly, but then as you drink it more, even you know, even impresses you more, and that's what, what this one is doing to me, this double engine, I liked it, I liked the two ounce sample, I liked the first glass I poured of the day, I liked the second glass, but the more I have of this beer, the more I am enjoying it, it is a beautifully done double IPA, it is absolutely gorgeous, the aromas, the taste, I mean, everything about this beer is perfect, there is not flaw one, and I, we can just, you know, we can discuss all day, uh, which is the best double or imperial IPA. I don't like to have those discussions because I think so much depends on mood. You know, I mean, uh, I, I think a lot of people will mention specific beers just because it makes them sound cool. So you say, well, I like this one better because that makes them sound, you know, good in the beer geek world. But if they, I, I think a lot of these folks would have no idea what they were drinking if if they were uh, had a had blind taste this. And that's what I think. I think if I were to take this beer, uh, this particular Imperial IPA, the double engine from Kirkwood Station, and set up a blind taste test with those others that you, I mean, I don't even mention the names of specific Imperial IPAs because beer geeks know what I'm talking about, but I can mix this one in with those others. Uh, and this one's going to com compare well. Uh, it is. It, it can compete. Will it be the champion? I don't know, but it's certainly a damn contender, and that's for sure. And I love it when small breweries like this can put up a world-class beer, and that's what this is. This double engine uh, from Kirkwood Station is a world-class uh, Imperial IPA. And now whether it's it's a top five or top ten, well, that's not up to me to decide. But it is, certainly is a world-class beer, and that is, that is absolutely for sure. So, in conclusion, <laughs> I'm not going to try to run too long. Hey, I'm coming to beer worse, I'm going to get out of here. But I've got a little more in here, so I'll be back for another video.